In this section we're going to focus on the create DDL statement, create table, and briefly create database, but we'll spend more time using create table since table structures tend to be far more complex than database structures since the table is the base unit for representing fields which represent various bits and pieces of information. You've seen us create tables for contact for example but after having gone through lengthy discussions regarding DDL as well as DML statements or dynamic or data definition language statements as well as data manipulation statements it's time to formally define a useful table structure so we're going to set up a database called HR within it we will define a table called employees with sensible field names and as a result we will pick from the data types that we are now considered professionals using as a result of studying the supported MySQL database and field types Let's open the shell and launch gedit to get a recent session of our notes. And towards the bottom, we're going to set up a new task, and that new task is to define an HR database. So this, in this particular area, we're talking about create database initially, followed by create table syntax for employees table. Now, as we've mentioned, a database is nothing more than a container, a logical container similar to a directory within a file system for multiple tables. So if you look at a file system, for example, the very fact that we have a subdirectory called temp is analogous to a database or a container within a DBMS. So databases function as containers. Beneath temp, however, we're free to define any number of subdirectories or subcontainers as well as any number of files. The subcontainers or subdirectories are analogous to tables and the files within those tables are analogous to the types of fields because you may have on your file system for example text files or binary files of various types whether binary for one application such as OpenOffice or binary for PDF or simply ASCII text or UTF-8 and the like. So the various file types are analogous to the various field types and the directory is analogous to the database. So creating a database is a very easy task since it functions really as a logical container for any number of tables within reason of course and within the limits of MySQL version 5.x. In order to create a database for HR we'll simply execute the statement create database HR. That's all we really need unless you have some other requirements with respect to the character set supported by the database we can just assume the default that create database will inherit when run within the MySQL framework including the default character set the default and the default collation for any information stored within the database which usually is enough to cover the character sets for Western Europe and the United States so having said that, there is some additional syntax that we can use to alter our create database statement to help prevent overriding existing databases or throwing any errors. We can apply a condition to create database which will create the database only if it does not exist using the following syntax. Create database if not exists and followed by the name of the database. This particular syntax or key term also applies to create table so in the event that you want to have the DBMS or the MySQL terminal monitor interface check the existence or check for the existence of a database or a table prior to creation simply append to your create database or create table statement and if not exists check and this will check to ensure that the, the database or whatever object it is that you're attempting to create does not exist database or table so having said that let's copy this particular syntax and in a shell window connect as the most privileged user to our MySQL instance at which point we'll create an HR database or container if you will we'll clear screen MySQL user root and we'll prompt for the password and once in, we'll execute a show databases just to see what's available on the system. 
although the command that we're going to execute will catch any duplicates anyway or in any existing databases. We'll control shift V and this simple statement create database if not exists HR will create the container. We'll follow that up again with a show databases statement and you'll see we now have a new container called HR but HR has no tables defined. If you want to reference as we've shown you the syntax that was used to create the HR database simply execute a show create database against the HR database and you'll see the code that was used to create the database very simple code create database HR which uses the default character set which is Latin 1 which serves for most of Western Europe and the United States in terms of being able to support the characters used by the various languages throughout those regions Super. So the database container exists. There isn't much to be said about the create database statement. There is a drop database that is similar to the create database, which allows you to get rid of the database, but we'll look at drop independently. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. You understand the field type supported by MySQL, so we want to create a logical table, or at least a logical base table called employees, which will store base employee related information. So our first task is to create an employees and we'll place employees in between single quotes to indicate that this is the actual name, the literal name of the table. So we'll create an employees base table, meaning it will store basic non redundant information, employee data. That's what we mean by a base table. And this base table will also serve as the platform for, for subsequent lookups, such as to tie to additional information, such as a calendar, which could store days off, or any other lookup type information that we'd want to place into the base table, perhaps age, date of birth, family members, phone numbers, contact numbers, and the like, all can be stored in tables that can be joined at a separate time rather than using the base table. But the base table is meant, again, to store base basic information that should not be redundant. So what are some of the fields that should be defined in an employees type table? Well, let's mention a few and then we'll construct the syntax that create table will accept to make this all work. In a base employees table, logically you should want an ID or some sort of auto incrementing column so that you can keep track of the number of employees or place a counter for each row within the number of employees and have the database take care of that for you rather than programming it in or keeping track of the number manually. You certainly could run a select count against the table to determine the number of employees, but usually when you have many items that should be unique within a table structure, you should use an auto incrementing column to keep track of that information. So it's just good database design and also the auto incrementing column serves as a way for us to cross reference information in other tables, in lookup tables. For example, let's say in the base table we have a, a record for a user named Dean, for example, Dean Davis as one record. The ID, let's say the user's name occupies the ID number one or record number one could be cross-referenced in other lookup tables for additional information such as contact numbers. You may have a lookup table where you store the various phone numbers where you can look up your employees and rather than storing that information in the base table just place it in the lookup table and we can perform joins based on the auto inc incrementing ID which is ID which is cross-referenced that is in the other lookup tables. So you generally want an ID column, and these are employees table columns or fields, slash fields. So we typically would want an ID column, which should be, and the specifics or attributes of the columns will be listed to the right of the column. So the ID column generally is going to be an auto incremented column which we specify using auto underscore increment and because it's an auto incremented column and should be unique we'll define this particular column as the primary key and we'll use the syntax that you see here primary key ID and you'll see how this all comes together 
Another useful column would be one to store the first name of the employee. We can list or label the column using an abbreviated F name or the full first name or a first underscore name or pretty much anything you'd like within the number of characters that are permitted by MySQL for table names. So for first name, let's go with F name. And we will define F name as the type of field that is appropriate to store first name type information. Now we've shown you and have mentioned that car and var car type columns for storing characters are generally ideal for storing base table type information such as contact information. So here we have a choice to make between car and var car. If you're concerned about efficiency, you should go with var car. If you're not concerned about efficiency and are more concerned about consistency or fixed length columns, then go with car in terms of how your data is returned. We're going to go with var car because it is more efficient and preserves any trailing spaces that are generally not preserved by car type columns as you know. So we'll use var car and we'll use uppercase to indicate that it is a keyword supported by the database and we'll make var car for the first name column to be a length of 20. That should be reasonable and if some reason causes us to have to extend the column length then we'll do so using an alter table command and that should be no problem at that point we shouldn't lose any data as a result but we'll begin with enough space to store 20 characters and if we need to extend it then we'll do so so similarly to F name let's go ahead and define a column for last name using L name as the label followed by varkar and we'll also use 20 as the length of the field. So we've got the auto incremented ID field. We also have first name, last name. What else may be useful in this particular table? Notice we're separating the fields using commas because this is the syntax that, it, that is expected by create table. In addition to last name, we may want to store the middle name. So we'll define a field called middle name and by the way this information can be inserted on separate lines as long as you don't terminate the command using a semicolon. So let's go ahead and define middle name to be also var car and we'll go with a shorter value of or shorter length of 15 characters followed by another logical column perhaps date of birth. So let's specify DOB as the acronym to be used DOB underscore date or we could simply call it DOB either or but it is of type date which will store the values from 1000 or through the from the year 1000 through the year 9999 so we have a date of birth and perhaps we want to specify a column to store the email address although this is something that's usually assigned in most companies after the employee has begun work but it doesn't hurt to store that information in the base table in the event that you want to run reports or perhaps send out all message messages to all employees defined in the base table or for whatever other usages or perhaps the email field may store a secondary email address for example you may have a few candidates in mind serious candidates but they have you the organization may not have yet committed to any of them and you may have only on file their personal email addresses that you may want to store in this particular column so let's go ahead and define a column that will store the email and this can also be varcar and we'll set it to 30 let's go ahead and be consistent by making varcar uppercase and this will be a, a varcar 30 field so we've taken care of email and what else would we want to define in an employees table again this is all up to your imagination but I'm just picking field names out of the air that makes sense how about a start date let's go ahead and define one called start underscore date and it too is of type date how about a termination date which may not be 
filled, but at some point will be for all employees at some point or another. This will be also of type date. How about starting salary? This is another useful column and we'll set starting salary to be type decimal. And as you can see, we're making use of various types from varchar to auto incrementing ID to date to decimal. Now for starting salary, depending on the class of employee within the company, this value could be a very low value, something as low as four figures, all the way up to pot potentially 10, 11, 12 figures, depending on the class of the employee and the size of the organization. So provision enough storage space field-wise to accommodate large salaries. Let's go ahead and place or specify that we will store up to 10 values for salary and we will permit two after the decimal point and let's go ahead and define yet another column that's useful let's say we want to ensure that every single time a record within this particular base table is updated the row or the record should be updated as well and the database should reflect as such by updating a particular column as we've shown you using the timestamp field type this is one useful way of benefiting from the advantages provided by timestamp as a field type because we can rely upon a DBMS to stamp the record every single time it's touched meaning when updated or when values are inserted so as a result let's define a column called last updated now, I like to use underscores but you'll find many DBAs tend to use a mixture of lower and uppercase characters when defining their field names I just tend to like underscores because it's easier to read when you separate the names or the portions of the name but some DBMS's have limitations or relatively shorter limitations on the length of the labels that you can apply so you need to check the documentation for your DBMS MySQL is pretty flexible in terms of the number of characters that we can use to define our databases and tables and fields so last updated will be of type timestamp and the DB will or the DBMS will update this column every single time so now we have all of our fields and let's just place ID within the open parentheses because this is the proper syntax so we're going to wrap everything that we've defined here with a create table statement and the name of the table so let's go ahead and execute or define then execute create table we we'll use the same clause or the same check if not exists to ensure that the table does not get created if it does exist so create table if not exists the name of the table is employees and in between the parentheses we have the definitions for the various fields that are permitted within this table so this is the structure of the employees table that's being defined use the, using the create table statement super now let's terminate this with semicolon and next we're going to execute this particular query this create table DDL statement watch the table get created and then insert values into our employees base table and begin manip manipulating the information using DML statements so now that we have our syntax laid out let's just double check that it's correct before attempting to create the employees table the syntax is as follows create table optionally specifying if not exists followed by the name of the table in this case it's called employees followed by ID we need to specify a field type for ID so let's go with int and it's an auto incremented field followed by comma then primary key is ID first name last name middle name date of birth email start date termination date starting salary last updated and let's try to execute this particular command and we'll debug from our window let's just create some space here and notice it was created successfully so let's take a look at this new table we'll show tables there's a table show tables reveals all the defined tables within the base HR database 
and the base table is called employees. Now let's say for example you move all the data off the screen or entirely remove yourself from the MySQL instance and return and you're interested in seeing what syntax was used to create the table as we've shown you simply execute a show create tables table that is for the table employees this will reveal the syntax that was used to create it create table employees and it's optional to specify back ticks or single quotes it's up to you and here you see the entire syntax which you can store in a text file for usage perhaps in a script or elsewhere so now we have this new table we can insert in information into it but the object here wasn't necessarily to insert information but rather to understand when and where to use certain field types when to use var cars or cars in this case we could have used either but preferred to have more precision on a per row basis albeit for a little overhead but nonetheless ultimately saving space and the other types defined for date of birth, the date time fields, or the date type fields, including date of birth, start date, termination date, last updated, so that when records are inserted into this particular table, the DBMS will update it for us. And since it is a sensitive table, we may want to make certain columns not null or force values to be in them. Perhaps start date should always have a value. Perhaps email should always have a, a value as well as first name and last name. This is where using the alter table statement helps out or simply dropping the table and redoing the table. So let's go ahead and drop the table since we've spent a lot of time using alter table. You know how it works. You should be pretty much intimate with the syntax. We'll go ahead and drop table employees this cans a table without prompting us and now a show tables reveals that it no longer exists and a show create table employees returns an error as well because it no longer exists if we wanted to force certain columns to always have values and to not accept nulls then this is our opportunity to do so or once the table is in place and data is already in it to either export the data and drop and redefine the table or to use the alter table statement or to simply drop the table and recreate the table as we're doing here so first name we've decided should never be null so let's go ahead and specify not null and we'll copy not null into memory because we want to specify it for a few fields ditto for last name and it's optional for middle name middle name can be null date of birth ditto because obviously if the person's an employee they're at least 16 years of age email ditto we want an email address these are forced columns start date perhaps we'll leave blank because we may want to store employees in here without specifying a start date but this this is not a recommendation although this is the rules that are employed here are all subject to the way you do your business ideally it should be a not null column forcing the person or application inserting data to specify a value for start date termination date can be null starting salary should also contain some sort of value so let's go ahead and paste it and last updated will be handled by the DBMS so now we've set some constraints some per column constraints to enforce a certain level of integrity for the fields that are a part of our base employees table or the fields that constitute this particular table now by definition the ID field will never accept nulls a null really translates to the next incremented value so you don't have to worry about using not null on the auto incremented field ID because the DBMS by default will increase or increase by one the newly created entry for this particular column for the ID column so if the last column was one the new column will be two Let's go ahead and attempt to create this particular table structure again and notice it took four hundredths of a second and we will then show tables or show create tables employees. Here's the new syntax including not nulls on the fields that we care about. And let's describe employees to see how this table is laid out. And it's laid out much more professionally. For example, ID has a width of eleven it's an integer type but it displays up to 11 characters 
it will only store unsigned values since auto incremented fields are positive fields or store positive values nulls are okay which translates to the next numeric value in sequence so if one row contains three for example a newly created record or row will be tagged with the ID 4 first name is varcar 20 nulls are not permitted it is not a primary key however this particular auto incremented ID field is now in employee tables you want to be careful of when defining primary keys because primary keys force uniqueness and in large organizations you're likely to have users with the same name or employees with the same name so be careful on which columns you force primary key constraints on unless of course you discuss this with the folks who have all of the information and come up with some business rules related to the way you're going to lay out your tables last name is defined exactly the way first name is defined middle name varkar 15 nulls are okay not everyone has a middle name the default value is null now if you wanted to specify a default value for a column you certainly could using the default keyword when creating tables so the create table statement and this is a DDL statement, a data definition language statement, will allow you to set defaults for certain values. You certainly don't want to set defaults for a value or a column such as middle name unless you wanted to specify something such as not applicable or not specified or something along those lines. But null serves that purpose and null uses far less storage space in the database than not applicable or some other value that you could think of. Date of birth may not be null and is of type date we could force constraints on this particular column as well so that only certain ranges are permitted such as between the years 1910 and 1985 for example or 1990 for example since it's 2006 emails varkar 30 it also must not be null it is a requirement whether it's the user's personal email address or a company assigned email address and start date is also a required field it may not be null even if the person is considered to be a contractor they have a start date or are assigned a start date and should be recorded for compliancy reasons in the event that you need to audit your employees table or your data tables your base tables for your organization you should rest assured as the HR person or the person responsible for this database that the integrity of the table structure for employees preserves key information such as start date again we mentioned that this particular base table doesn't contain redundant information it's non-redundant and it's base info other columns that we'll add later on when we extend the table using the alter table statement will function as lookups for commonly shared values such as salary ranges or exact salary values especially if the company is structured using some sort of pay scale where everyone makes the same amount of money at the same pay scale or perhaps we could define a separate table which stores bonuses and other information that changes and becomes redundant over time and as a result should be stored in a smaller subordinate lookup table with a foreign key primary key relationship and as mentioned starting salary should not be null something should be placed here last updated will be handled by the DBMS now this database contains no data just structural information a select star from employees reveals as such once we've executed it and now it's our job to insert data into this particular table and purposely attempting to break the constraints by not specifying certain fields so let's go ahead and try to do so we're going to insert into and this will be the first record and this particular table name is employees and we'll set the columns where we want to insert information so let's set now by the way if you don't use set and you use values you could specify default for certain columns so let's show you that syntax if you go ahead and specify values and in between open and close parentheses specify your values separated by single quotes and terminated by commas you could specify the keyword default for a column where you don't want to comment for example in the first column for ID which is auto incremented we should not specify a value so we should specify default leaving leaving it up to the DBMS to 
include or store a value for us. So the first column is okay, it'll have a default value. The second column, however, for first name, should be specified by the user or application or subject entering the information. So in this case, first name will specify as Trisha. Last name, let's specify as Hyacinth. Middle name, let's specify as N. DOB, let's specify as 8. And you know the syntax is pretty flexible, but it is in the syntax of YYYY as specified here. And we don't need delimiters. So let's go ahead and just simply specify 1974. 0816. That should suffice. It's date, not time, so this is all that's necessary. Email, let's go ahead and specify Trisha at LinuxCBT.com. Start date, let's go ahead and specify a date of 2003, 03, 01. And starting salary, let's put a great value in there of $250,000. Super. Let's attempt to insert these values and see what happens when we try to break the table structure. Notice it says the amount of columns we attempted to update it does not match the columns required by the table. Termination data is blank, for example. So after the starting date or start date which is here is 2003-01 we should specify default for the next column and we're still not matching let's take a look to see where we're off we have ID which is the first column followed by first name then last name then middle name followed by DOB email start date termination date, starting salary, and we didn't specify default for the last field. That's where we're missing the value. So this is an alternate way to use the insert statement or the insert data manipulation language statement, DML statement, to insert values into the table structure. For the columns where you don't have values and you want the DBMS to insert its defaults, simply specify the default keyword, but you need to be sure that you account for all the columns expected by the DBMS. Let's rerun that select star from employees, and you'll see we have our very first record. The database took care of inserting the ID number one because it's an auto-incremented column. We specified the subsequent columns including date of birth which was stored, email address, start date, termination date was set to null by the DBMS which is the default value and the starting salary was specified with the precision being held because it's decimal followed by the last updated timestamp column which reflects the fact that we touched it. So f from here we could go ahead and specify values for additional users but you get the picture the database will take care of incrementing the values for us and if we run update queries against this particular table it'll be taken care of for us super so that's a little bit about using create table we spent a great deal of time covering the different data types for strings dates as well as numeric types that are supported by the DBMS once you have a good sense for the, the data types that are supported then it should be much much easier more comfortable for you to use create table type statements the syntax is very easy create the table if it doesn't exist with a file with or with some sort of structure usually when you use or define an auto incremented field you use the auto underscore increment keyword and then you need to follow that up with a primary key definition which could be anywhere in between the open and close parentheses and in between the first field and the last parentheses or between parentheses you can go ahead and define all the other fields and they'll be defined in the order that you see here so if you need to switch the order later on you have a few options. You can drop the table and redefine it all together, risking losing data. Or you could use the alter table statement to reorder the columns or rename the columns if that's what you think is ideal. But we've used columns of various types. These types are the most common types used across DBMSs, including varcar, car, date, timestamp, and so on. So now you have a sense for using the create table 
ddl statement command. We'd like to wrap up the create table ddl statement section by discussing some other neat features supported by create table. This is again a DDL statement or a data definition language statement that you'll use when defining tables and optionally when defining databases as well. Let's just add to our notes the fact that you can perform some other neat tricks including the following. We can create an exact mirror image of an existing table. So let's say there is a defined table structure that you'd like to mirror rather than re-executing the SQL code or having to remember the SQL code or using a describe and then reconstructing the SQL code. Simply use MySQL's features to mirror or duplicate an existing table. So we'll label this section duplicating existing tables. In order to do so you use the create table statement. So it's create table and the syntax is quite similar to the statements used for creating a typical table. However we'll add one optional argument or one optional option which will permit the creation of a duplicate table. So we'll create table and we'll also use if not exist so that the DBMS will check to ensure that the, D the database doesn't have a duplicate table or a table by the same name so we don't inadvertently clobber any data. The name of the table, let's go with employees2 for example, since we have an employees table. Let's just confirm that we'll return to the shell MySQL U root and prompt for password. Then we will show databases followed by a use HR followed by show tables and we want to duplicate employees to some table named employees2. So let's return to this area to build our syntax. So we'll create table if it doesn't exist already employees2 and we simply need to add the clause which resembles the following like and in this case the syntax is simply old table name and then MySQL handles the task of examining the old table name and duplicating its structure to the new table name but it does not duplicate data so we would need to run an insert statement to duplicate the data but let's go ahead and execute the duplication of the table first and then worry about duplicating the data after since this is really a way to copy the structure of a table so let's include that as well in our section so this duplicates existing table structures and optionally we run an insert statement using select the insert select option to duplicate the data so we'll create table if it doesn't already exist and we'll give it a name this should be plural we'll give it a name of employees too but it could be any other name like old table name the old table name in this case is employees now this table could come from anywhere within the DBMS's reach in other words it could be a table in some other database let's go ahead and attempt to create this new table we'll control shift V and as you can see the query ran OK zero rows were affected because we didn't perform any updates or inserts we simply mimicked the, the table structure let's rerun show tables and you'll see that employees2 now exists we can execute a show create table against employees and compare the output to employees2 employees dumps this syntax employees2 dumps a similar syntax with the only difference being the name of the table in this case the table's name is employee employees2 and the prior table's name is employees so very simple difference the structure is identical but as mentioned there is no data in the new table let's select count star from employees to see how many records are in employees employees returns one record select star from employees will return what that record is and it's a record for a Linux Genius employee. 
but this user or record does not exist in employees2 so let's confirm as such by executing a select count star against employees2 employees2 returns zero records super now how do we populate this particular table well as mentioned if we use the insert into statement but the select form we can insert into the columns as they're defined one for one since the table employees2 is a mirror of employees and the DBMS will take care of the duplication of the data using the data manipulation language statement or DML statement insert as well as select. Let's go ahead and execute that query. So the second portion of what we're trying to do here is to duplicate the data from source table to destination table and this is simply achieved by executing an insert into the name of the destination table which in this case is called employees to followed by a select star and we don't need to worry about selecting individual columns because the structures are identical from employees and this is all that's required now if there were slight differences in the table structure then we'd need to select exact columns or use the set variation on the insert statement to specify only columns that we're interested in but in this case it is not a concern and we shall go ahead or proceed with this insert statement when completed we'll then execute a select count star from employees two and you'll see that it will contain after the fact one record one record was up uploaded or updated or inserted into the table structure there were no duplicates and there were no warnings and the count returned one instead of zero so let's go ahead and execute that select star from employees two that is to see what's in there and employees two notice contains the same structure super so that's how easy it is to duplicate tables and table structure information we could have executed both steps in one particular go at it let's continue our discussion of create tables now another neat feature provided by MySQL is the ability to create temporary tables so let's label this section temporary table creation temporary tables are only good for the duration of the session for the duration of the connected session so in this case we have a session with the MySQL DBMS as you know if we execute a show process list it returns the currently connected sessions to the server we're connected as root to localhost and we're currently using the DBHR which is also evident in the prompt so based on the fact that we are connection ID number one to the server we can create temporary tables and not worry about duplications in names or having to maintain unique names because the temporary table name is tied to the connection or tied to the session which means multiple users can connect to the server and create the same table name but MySQL will be able to track those table names independently so that's something cool to keep in mind because oftentimes you may be working and you need to extract let's say a subset of a given data table that you'd like to manipulate temporarily in a temporary table so as a result you'll use the create table statement but you'll vary it slightly by doing something such as the following we'll create table we still persist with if not exists because it's useful in the event that there exists a table with the same name but the difference is we want to define this as a temporary table so instead of simply create table we define the syntax using create temporary table if not exists followed by its name let's go with a name such as temp employees and in this case we're using underscore to separate for visibility the two strings temp and employees so we'll create temporary table if it doesn't exist called temp underscore employees this particular table structure will reside only for this particular connection but we could select all data from any table from any database that's under management by the DBMS into our new table structure for temporary usage and perhaps outdate the data or output the data that is to a file or manipulate it in some other fashion
So let's go ahead and create that temporary table. We'll control shift V and you'll notice that it says we must define a column which is a requirement. So between parentheses as is the case with typical create table syntax we'll define the columns that we'll use in this particular table. Let's just go ahead and define some basic columns including an auto incremented column. So we'll, we'll specify one column as being an ID column and it should be auto incremented and we'll set it to be the primary key as well followed by parentheses ID and perhaps we'll define a column called salary we'll set salary to be var car or in this case since it's numeric let's go with decimal as we've done followed by 10 comma 2 and let's set a column called year to correlate when the salary was granted to a given year now we're not going to create this table we're just or we're not going to create it permanently or commit it to disk this is just all in memory so that we have a structure that we can work with so let's go ahead and create that extra column so year will be of type year and we'll specify another column for first name to be F name we'll make it var car and we'll give enough space make it 30 this should suffice if we need to make changes to the temporary table we can alter it in memory and we'll close with a closing parentheses so providing that our syntax is correct we should be able to create this table and let's double check that syntax if you notice the after temp employees we have ID set just need to confirm the syntax and we appear to be missing the type for ID so let's just set ID to be integer since it's auto incrementing and now the table has been created but you won't find traces of the table on the file system let's attempt to list the directory MySQL manages its databases using an escape sequence backslash exclamation followed by LSLTR var lib MySQL you'll see that there are directories for databases that are defined including MySQL contact temp DB as well as HR but you don't see any traces or files or entries for this temporary table the temporary table does not exist on the file system it is in memory so this new temp underscore employees won't show up anywhere even beneath the MySQL subdirectory let's take a brief look at that and you won't see any traces now in this case the user who we're logged into the operating system as has no permissions to read the MySQL subdirectory but the table does exist in memory we can execute against the DBMS described for example temp underscore employees and you'll see that the structure is returned it contains an auto incremented column as well as salary year and first name but again it's all in memory and it's all based on the existing connection we could go ahead and open a separate connection from a separate shell and create the same table that's mysql user root p login and execute a create and in fact we can just copy the command from the previous session so let's find that create temporary tables rather than typing it in again it should be somewhere in our history and here it is so we'll create the same table name as a totally different user just to prove that MySQL will create this table with the same name without any errors whatsoever now we're not within a database let's use after showing databases we'll use HR for example because it's the same database and then we'll control shift V to paste it and notice that the table has been created yet again let's describe temp underscore employees and you'll see that it's there now from the left window we can drop the table and you'll see that it persists within the other window let's drop table temp underscore employees and it's gone but that's only from this session how about if we navigate over to the other session where we're still logged in as the user root 
and the table structure still exists, which means we are free to populate it with information from other tables or from files on the file system for the sake of manipulating the table structure within the DBMS. So temporary tables are good only for the current session connected to the DBMS and are very useful in the event that you need to manipulate data or analyze the data using DML type statements such as select, insert, update, delete. You may want to structurally represent data which exists on the file system in some sort of delimited format, tab, comma, and so on. So that's a really neat use for temporary tables. Another neat use is you may have multiple tables defined in multiple databases that you'd like to store into a temporary structure for the sake of presentation perhaps to a script to lessen the amount of logic that needs to be placed into a front-end script for example you could create a temporary table using cron at an, a predetermined time on some sort of automatic schedule so those are just some some ideas for using temporary tables now there's of course more you can do with tables another neat thing that we could do is actually rename a table which we've shown you using the alter table statement but there's an alternative to the, the alter table statement which permits renaming tables and it's called rename table so let's say for example we'll show tables we've duplicated the structure of employees to employees 2 let's say we wanted to rename employees 2 to employees 3 very simple simply execute rename table and in this case we're going to specify the source table in this case it's employees 2 so let's copy it and then control shift V to the new name and the syntax is that simple so we'll rename it to employees 3 and then terminate our command so renaming tables is very simple but rename accepts multiple source and destination table names in the event that you want to effect a widespread change so let's label this section rename tables using this syntax and as you know we can create temporary tables using the previous syntax and we should also mention that beneath temporary tables that temp tables are connection slash session based and can be duplicate names so let's go back to our rename table statement and now you'll see that the table structure has been renamed from employees 2 to employees 3 and again rename accepts multiple tables source and destination at one time now what if we wanted to duplicate the table structure using create table to create an additional table so like employees for example so let's copy this syntax and then use rename widespread so we're gonna create table employees 3 and make it like employees 2 and let's take a brief look here we've named it 3 so we'll name 3 4 so we'll go from or 4 like 3 that is let's execute a show tables you'll see that we now have 3 and 4 albeit 3 has data 4 doesn't but we now have two table structures that we can play with using the rename command to effect a multiple rename of multiple tables simply specify the source and destination as many times as you need it so for example rename table employees let's say 3 to 5 comma employees 4 to employees 6 will cause table 3 to become table 5 and let's just double check that 3 will become a table which doesn't exist called 5 and then 4 will become 6 so we'll end up with tables 5 and 6 notice no errors and let's show tables again and you'll see that the tables have been renamed at the same time or in one command saving us from having to execute multiple alter statements or multiple rename statements for that matter so rename is really a shortcut to altering the table using the alter table statement let's return these tables from five and six to in this case two and three so we'll make five two and then six three followed by a show tables 
and you'll see that we've returned to the original operating status of employees two and three which are mirrored structures of the employees table so these are some of the things we can do using the create table DDL statement we want to look at other things that we can do with tables databases indices and the like